Touch it. Hey guys, Ali Shalaha here again today. Uh, just going to do a quick video on how we start free shaping the sit command. So, as Duchess just did, uh, she's kind of she's getting more and more familiar with this work every day, and so you'll start seeing Duchess becoming what we call an active dog. She now knows that we're in a session, we're working right now paying attention to me and doing multiple different things, jumping up on things, sitting, downing, standing, barking. At this point, I can reward just about anything I want that the dog does for me because I want my dog to be an active learner. I want my dog to try new things. I want my dog to, to bark. I want my dog to get frustrated. I want my dog going up on new objects or sniffing around and just doing different things. I don't want, what I don't want is a dog who's afraid to do new things because they're worried about getting punished. So in the beginning stages of the training, we just work on shaping the ideas and the commands that we like. And then once we have the dog who's snapping in and out of sits, we're building power and that confidence for the exercise, then we'll start demanding a little bit more from the dog to where we won't reward them just for a simple sit. Now it has to be a sit and a heel command, sit and a front command, sit between my legs. We will reward multiple different pictures of the sit command <clears throat> because dogs, dogs think in pictures. So if you just teach your dog sit in front of you, sit in front of you, sit in front of you, if your dog's on the left of you and you ask them to sit, a lot of the times they won't do so because they have not seen that picture. You haven't rewarded them. You haven't built the hope and the confidence and the power of sit in those positions. So reward here, reward here, reward here. You know, reward in between your legs. Build that power for that exercise in multiple different positions until that dog is really solid and they will sit on a place, they'll sit on the left of you, on the right of you, in front of you, behind you, with your back turned, in a different room. You can use camcorder setups <clears throat> to where you can really cement the fact of what <clears throat> the dog is getting rewarded for. And then when you start seeing your dog repeating this exercise and being confident in it and having really nice snappy down or snappy sits, and they're like, oh, I know that if I put my butt on the ground, reward comes out every single time. Now you can start to name it. But until you have that, just keep working on the position so you build the power, the confidence in the exercise versus having a dog who's unsure about themselves, okay? So here's sit shaping. That's just yes. So I'll mark the work to get it started. Okay. If I'm marking just sits, yes. I'll wait till she puts her butt on the ground, and I'll reward her two, three times. I can also throw my rewards for remote rewarding. Yes. Throw my reward out, she gets a couple over there. I'm looking for the dog to come back to me, re-engage. They want the money, come find the bank. Yes, she puts her butt on the ground, I mark it, pull my hands out, yes, good. I mark it, I give her a little bit of food. Yes, and you'll see I'm moving each time because I want this dog to realize that when I say the word yes, it's the terminal marker. You're free to get up from the position. You're free to move. You're free to move again. If I say good, that means the food is going to come to you. Stay in position. So I build this confidence in the dog. The dog comes over to me and expects, yes, good girl. And I'm out of food, so i got to go get a little bit more food for Duchess. But you'll see the confidence building Duchess was a pretty fearful dog when we first started, and now she's really starting to get it. She's giving me that good energy. She's, she's still a little nervous about certain situations, certain sudden sounds and things like that. But she's got two dogs back here to where normally, just like that, okay? You saw Coda just barely came off the place, and she was a little bit fearful of that. What we're trying to do is build that confidence. Eventually, what I'll have is I'll have multiple dogs walking around her working on those sit commands, down commands, things like that, to where she starts to get to rehearse 
uh, the sit command around multiple dogs walking around her, maybe even sniffing her, maybe even kind of being in her face a little bit, to where she starts getting rewarded for holding her position while other dogs are around. And we're building that positive relationship with dogs are not a big deal. Dogs are just neutral. They are just there to have fun and they're there to play. And you know, if I have a dog who's being a little too pushy with Duchess, I step in and I push that dog away and give Duchess the space that she needs to feel comfortable. But eventually I gotta push that dog to that next level to where now you have to sit because I told you to sit. I know you're uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but I want to build that confidence before I start overlaying that next level of stress and the training. Because if my dog's not confident with no dogs around, she's definitely not going to be confident with dogs around. And if she's confident with dogs around, then she's definitely not going to be confident with dogs just walking around freely. I have to show her these dogs mean no harm to you. These dogs are not going to affect you. I'm not going to allow that to happen. If something happens or screws up, you know, it's going to happen. It's part of training. And that's why we have things like muzzles. And that's why we have dogs that are being rehabilitated or very fearful or even aggressive wear muzzles. So when we do start working around dogs and we start working around toys, that dogs that are toy aggressive or poo aggressive or, or whatever, we have the tools in order to prevent them repeating the bad exercise. Eventually, once we've shown the dog multiple repetitions of success around their triggers, then we're going to start overlaying punishment for poor decisions. So correct decisions get you food, get you no pressure, relieve stress. Poor decisions of biting, attacking, going after another dog gets you punishment, whether it's e-collar, pinch collar, whatever. The, punishment doesn't have to be a big punishment. It, whatever works for the dog. Punishment is simply something that is added or taken away that deters the situation from happening again. If the dog is repeatedly attacking or repeatedly going after other dogs, you're not there yet. You're not in that state of mind where you need to be working around that level of stress. That's why we always build this process. It's a build process, but it really doesn't take long for the dog to start realizing they can be rewarded in stressful situations and be pushed to that next level and all of a sudden your dog goes, aha, I don't have to be a jerk, I don't have to be fearful, I don't have to be anxious, I don't have to be frustrated, I, don't, I only have to pay attention to this guy, you, the owner, okay, or the trainer, or whoever it is, and then once that message is overlaid, then we can start bringing that to our spouse, or bring our spouse in. They can start working with the dog and we can, it's very awesome. That's what I always tell people. Start with one trainer, one person working with the dog, one person building confidence, one person training everything. And then once you have the dog who's working for one person under a raiment of circumstance, distractions, levels of stress, they've gone through their commands, they're switched over to vocal, they're running through, they're transitioning from different commands, sit to down, down to sit. Sit to stand, stand to down, you've worked your dog through sit to place, place to sit, multiple, multiple different commands. Then you can take it and start bringing your spouse in and you can communicate with your spouse how you take over the training. It's amazing how fast these dogs will understand, oh, this is just another person that I play the game with. Same thing with your kids. Now, I don't recommend kids training dogs much under 10 years old because there's just not, some kids are a whiz at it. They just get it, they understand how to do it, but a lot of kids don't have that mental, the mental clarity to be able to mark and to be able to timely apply correction or timely apply what we're teaching the dog. So I always say, if your kids are understanding the work, don't bring them into the training because it's just going to confuse your dog, and especially when there's overlaying of punishment and things like that. Your kids have to be very, very sure of what training is and how it is performed and how it is done. Otherwise, you're just going to have a mess. You're going to have a dog that listens to some people but not others. You're going to have a dog that may be fearful of others but not others. So just make it consistent 
do it with one person at first, and then as the dog gets more and more confident, then you can start bringing in your kids. Then you can start bringing in, you know, just have your kids walk your dog. Walk your dog in a heel. Tell, them, tell the dog heel, and make sure that the dog stays in this position. Teach your kids how to train the dog. If your kids are lacking in it, don't make the dog suffer because the kids are incapable of the work. Teach the dog first, then the transition is so much easier when you move on to the next step. So I hope this was an informational video for you guys. If you have any questions, you can email me at jamie, J-A-I-M-E, at unleashedomaha.com. You can private message me on the Facebook application, or you can dial me direct at 402-965-1114, and we'd be happy to either come out to your place, uh, or I'm trying to get something set up to where we can maybe do Skype sessions for a nominal fee. Uh, but if you need help in kind of speeding up the process, uh, I'd be more than happy to assist you guys in your training program. So have an awesome day, guys. Uh, get out there and train your dogs.